MedCram. Welcome to another MedCram lecture. We're going to talk about pulmonary function testing. And uh, this is going to be over a couple of lectures. We're going to go over the introduction and give you a little bit of a primer, if you will, on pulmonary function testing and then get into more specifics so that you understand exactly what it is that's going on. So the whole point of pulmonary function testing is to measure someone's lungs and find out whether or not they're normal or abnormal. And if it's abnormal, find out why. Now this is kind of akin to getting tests on, for instance, your heart with an echocardiogram or an EKG where we're measuring the heart. Well, the problem is that the heart is measured on a proportion. For instance, the ejection fraction is how much blood on each pump the heart can pump out and normal is you know approximately 50 percent ejection fraction and we can measure the chamber size and we can measure the valve and see if there's regurgitation the problem is in taking this issue and taking it over to the lungs is that the lungs are more of an absolute and people's lungs can be different based on their height and, and other variables so we need to figure out exactly how we're going to figure out what's normal for somebody's lung. And that can be a little tricky. So are there four things that we need to take into consideration before we determine what the absolute values are for somebody who can uh, do a pulmonary function test? And the first one is height. Okay, so height makes a difference. L let me explain. If you've got uh, somebody here who's very tall versus somebody who's very short, obviously a proportion of their body is going to have lungs in them. And the short person's going to have smaller lungs, and the bigger person is going to have bigger lungs. And so obviously the amount of air absolutely that could be able to breathe in and out is going to be dependent on the size of their lungs. So obviously height has to come into it. So that's the first thing we, that we're going to need to know and put into our equation to figure out what the normal lung volumes should be for somebody. Number two is going to be age. What happens as you hit the age of 25, which is the best that you're ever going to be in life in terms of your lung function, is lung function generally is going to decline even if someone has never smoked. And so as you get older, the lung function is going to decline. And depending where you are along that axis, that x-axis, is going to determine where somebody would be normally for any point along that curve. And so age is the second variable that goes into the equation. The third variable is gender. Okay, male and female are going to have different size lungs. And so that needs to be taken into consideration. This is independent, by the way, of height. So gender is the third variable that goes into that. And number four is race. Let me give an example. If you've got, for for sake of argument here, you've got a white man and African-American, black man. In terms of where their proportions are, generally speaking, the white man is going to have his waist, or his navel, if you will, lower down than an African-American or a black man, which would be higher. So given the same exact height, black man's going to have smaller lungs than would white man. And similarly, you could look at the other way that black man would have longer legs for a specific height than a white man who would have shorter legs. And this has been looked at and researched in, in the literature. And so as a result, race also needs to play a role in terms of if you have someone with a specific height they're going to have different size lungs based on proportionality. Okay, so the purpose of all of this is to come up with a customized value for each individual based on 
hundreds and thousands of patients and research and distributions and curves and things of that nature. So if you put a specific human being, okay, and the four variables, number one is height, number two is age, number three is gender, and number four is race, and you take all of these variables of a person and you put it into the computer and turn a crank, out comes values, X in this case. And it's that number that'll tell you what the normal distribution should be. So there's going to be a distribution of patients and it will tell you what the 80% limit is. That number there will tell you if you are below this number, okay, actually it'll be down on this side here, 80% here. If you are below this number, that means you are abnormal. So these are all normal patients here, okay, and if you are below the 80% percent of predicted of that value, then that means you are abnormal. Let me tell it to you a different way. Let's say we plug in those four values and we come up with a number for the forced vital capacity. And we'll get into these numbers uh, in a little bit. And let's say that the number they come up with for the forced vital capacity for argument's sake is 3.00 liters. That means that the 80th or the minimum 80th percentile for three liters, or 80% of that predicted, is going to be 2.4 liters. And so if you are below 2.4 liters, that is considered abnormal. Another way of saying it is that if your value is greater than 80% of the predicted, then you are normal and there's no problems. Okay, so the key I want you to get out of this uh, lecture is specifically the lungs are a organ of the body, the organ of the body that can change in size and you can get different values for different people all with different distributions based on the four criteria which is height, number two is age, Number three is gender, and number four is race. Once you take an individual and you plug those numbers into the computer, they will give you values. And it's those values that you must base your abnormals on. This is different than looking at blood tests for the liver or looking at uh, an echocardiogram for the heart, because in that situation, they're really, you don't really have to take into consideration uh, these uh, values. So in our next lecture, we're going to talk about the lung itself and the pathophysiology, but this is kind of an introduction. So join us for the next lecture. Thanks very much.